Are you thinking of taking your child on their first carnival cruise? If so, then you're probably wondering, what do I need to know? Are there any rules? What am I supposed to pack for them? Hi fellow parents, I'm Amanda with Barretto's on the Loose, and in this video, we're gonna share everything you need to know about cruising carnival with a young child, specifically infants and toddlers under the age of two. Now we remember what it was like to prepare for our daughter Madison's first carnival cruise. We were like, we've cruised before, but never with a child. So what are we supposed to bring? Are there any rules or exclusions? Are there any activities for her age? We had so many questions. Well, we've learned a ton since Madison's first two cruises, and we hope we can give you some valuable information that will help you prepare for your child's first carnival cruise. If you haven't already, please click that subscribe button. So let's start with the most basic rule, age. Infants must be at least six months of age to go on a domestic or European cruise. Now if it's a trans-ocean or remote itinerary where there are more than two consecutive sea days, your child must be at least 12 months old. There is no COVID testing required for children under two. Now in terms of documents, you'll need to bring either a birth certificate or passport. Personally, we got Madison a passport and we will only leave the country with her passport, even if it's not required on a cruise. Our infants and toddlers are free for mostly everything at this age, but they are not free on a carnival cruise. That's because carnival charges their fares per person. So when you book a stateroom with two full fare guests, your child will be the additional person. Now, their additional person rate will either be more expensive or cheaper than the deal you snagged when you booked your cruise. One thing you do not have to pay for your child is gratuities, because gratuities are free for children under the age of two. Yes. Now let's talk about childcare. Camp Ocean is Carnival's childcare facility, and infants under the age of two can join during specific times. On sea days, you can leave your child in the care of youth staff at the facility, or you can go inside the facility and play with your child for free. While the ship is in port, you can leave your child in the care of youth staff, but they will not provide them with any meals, so you will have to be back in time to feed your little one. In the later part of the evenings, from 10 p.m. to 1 a.m., there is Night Owls Babysitting, where you can drop off your child in the Camp Ocean facility. Cribs are available, and there will also be children from the ages of 2 to 11. The child care fee is $7.50 per hour, plus 18% gratuity. Now let's talk about water play. Water works would be such a blast for our children on hot days. Unfortunately, they are not allowed to use any of the water areas on the ship, including pools, water slides, and water works until they are potty trained, even if they wear a swim diaper. One suggestion we have is to bring a collapsible basket with some toys for your child to play on Lido deck. Make sure you put down a towel underneath them because the deck does get hot. Some parents also bring along inflatable bathtubs to let their child play on it on their balcony this leads me to the next topic. If you plan on booking a balcony room, make sure you research your ship's smoking area so that you can avoid a balcony in that area. Now, also be very careful with the balcony doors because those doors can slam shut and that will be a disaster for little one's hands. Car seats. Do I need a car seat? The answer is not around the ship, but if you traveled with it, then you obviously have to bring it on board with you. So we suggest just storing it in your closet. If you are flying into your port city and you are planning on taking the carnival shuttle to and from the port, then you do not need a car seat. Children under two are considered a lap infant and are free if they do not occupy a seat on the carnival shuttle. If you will not need a car seat for transportation to and from the airport, then we suggest not bringing it along. Let's talk about strollers because I can't tell you how many times I've seen parents ask if they should bring a stroller on their cruise. And the answer really is, it depends. If you have an infant who's not mobile, then a stroller can come in handy. If you have a toddler who loves to walk and run around on their own, then the stroller will probably not get used that much, at least on the ship. If you're going to bring a stroller, we recommend an umbrella stroller and not a jogger. The stateroom doorway and hallways are small, especially if the stateroom steward has their cleaning cart out. So an umbrella stroller is just more convenient. Trust me, I love my jogger, but it's just too big to use around the ship. Umbrella strollers can also come in handy on port days. 
where you might be doing a lot of walking around. Of course, it depends on what you plan on doing in port that day, so truly, it's up to you. A stroller that reclines can come in handy for naps and diaper changes. You can obviously bring your own, or you can rent a stroller from Carnival for $10 a day or $40 for the entire cruise, like the one shown here. So as you can see, it really comes down to your child's age, mobility, and what you plan on doing in port that day. Something that worked out better for us was our baby carrier. I would wear Madison on my back when we were walking around if she wasn't already running around on her own. The baby carrier also came in handy for the buffets because it allowed for two free hands to make our plate of food instead of having one to make a plate of food and one to push a stroller. We recommend the Ergo Baby Omni 360 All Position Baby Carrier because you can use it through the infant and toddler stages and it's just so convenient. We also recommend a toddler backpack with a harness if your child is mobile. We swore we'd never use one before becoming parents, but here we are. Now I'm gonna share some stateroom organization tips with you. Our little ones come with lots of extra things when we vacation. Our favorite storage hack is to bring an over the door organizer to store all of the little things that don't quite have a place, but you don't want them lying around on the floor. We love this because it keeps us so organized. It's also not over the door. The walls and ceiling on a ship are metal, so another important gadget we bring are metal hooks. The metal hooks hold up the organizer as well as jackets, hats, lanyards, etc. It definitely keeps us organized. While we're talking about our stateroom, we also recommend bringing along disinfecting wipes so you can clean your stateroom at the start of your trip. We know the importance of sleep for our little ones, so there are a couple options for their sleeping arrangements. You can request a crib from your stateroom steward or by calling Carnival prior to your cruise. They use a portable metal crib shown here. If your child needs a darkened space and is in a crib, we recommend bringing along some extra magnetic hooks and a blackout curtain that you can hang around to separate their sleeping space. Or you can skip the crib and co-sleep. Personally, we co-sleep with Madison. Another option is to flip around the couch or have the couch be made into the bed and use inflatable bed rails or some extra pillows to make a barrier. Some parents will even bring along their pack and play. We also recommend bringing along a white noise machine and nightlight. Now we love to bring along our skip hop combo nightlight white noise machine. It goes everywhere with us when we vacation. Let's talk about bathing. Some parents love to bring along inflatable bathtubs to bathe their child in. My personal preference is to just shower with Madison and then I pass her off to my husband, Justin, who gets her dressed and then I finish my shower. It's one less thing to pack, so easy peasy. Let's talk about activities. Now there's not a whole lot of activities on board for our infants and toddlers, although some ships do have playgrounds which are really, really cool. If your child is mobile, one recommendation we have is to take them to the miniature golf course and let them climb on the structures since it's like a mini jungle gym for their size. Madison loved the golf course and collecting golf balls. We definitely visited this area every single day. Other activities you may consider are the Build-A-Bear workshop and the Dr. Seuss green eggs and ham breakfast. Let's talk about shore excursions. Some carnival shore excursions are free for children under two, three, and even five. Make sure you read the fine print when booking. When purchasing your shore excursion before your sale date, purchase for everyone except the free child. When you get on board, go to the shore excursion desk and they'll add your child onto the reservation and charge you a penny. Now, if you've already purchased a ticket for your child who should be free, go to the shore excursion desk on board and they'll refund your sale and sign account. Pay attention to the minimum age of a shore excursion because some may not be suitable for infants and toddlers. Let's go back to car seats real quick. If you decide to book an excursion with a local private company, pay attention to what their transportation is. Now some Caribbean and Mexican ports would not require a car seat, but if you go to let's say Juneau, Alaska, because you're in the United States, a car seat would be required. And if you don't have that car seat, then you can't book that excursion. All right, so what do we pack for our young children? Aside from all the gadgets we've already mentioned and the obvious items that are probably already in your diaper bag, let's start with clothes. We recommend light jackets, sweaters, onesies, short sleeve, tank tops, pants, shorts, rompers and other little outfits. Of course, pajamas, elegant night outfits, and other dresses, bathing suit, sun hat, 
sunglasses, a light muslin blanket, which comes in handy if your child naps in their stroller. You could just cover the stroller and give them some shade. Socks and booties if you have an infant. We have a couple different shoe options, sandals, tennis shoes, elegant shoes. And we always pack all of our clothes in compression packing cubes. Now our family of three each has their own set, their own color, different shapes and sizes and they come in handy to separate socks, shirts, pajamas, whatever it may be. Now, in terms of how many outfits to pack for your young child, we pack two a day for Madison. So we have a more casual outfit for the day and a little bit less casual outfit for dinner in the MDR. We also throw in some extra onesies and shirts and bottoms just in case. So that's what we have for clothes and shoes. Now for an Alaskan cruise, we do a little bit less short sleeves and shorts and more long sleeves, pants, beanies, gloves. If we know we're doing an excursion in the snow, a bib and of course a big comfy jacket. We also bring Madison snow boots, basically less summer wear and more winter wear. Now for bathing, diapering and overall wellness, we pack toothpaste, toothbrush and floss, hairbrush, nail clipper, shampoo, body wash, body lotion, and a washcloth, sunscreen, hand sanitizer, and hand sanitizing wipes. We know our little ones touch a lot of things. Booger suction bulb. If your child uses a pacifier, don't forget the pacifier. diaper changing mat. Some of the older ships do not have a diaper changing station on board, so keep that in mind. Or my personal favorite, I just change the diaper standing up because it's so much easier. Diapers, wipes, and diaper disposable bags from the dollar store. Now think about diapers. If you are flying into your port city and you have time, buy your diapers in your port city. Don't waste the space in your luggage when you're flying. Another option is if you are staying at a hotel in your port city, have your diapers ordered and delivered directly to the hotel. Again, it saves that extra space and weight inside of your suitcase when you're flying. Now, can you imagine if we would have flown with all these pull-ups? What a waste of space that would have been. So, travel tip from A and J is order your child's diapers or pull-ups in port city before your cruise. It'll make life so much easier. If you're potty training, a collapsible toilet seat is super convenient, as well as if your child's gonna use the public restrooms, these oversized toilet seat covers are amazing and just makes everything feel a lot more sanitary. So a really cool gadget we recommend for diaper changes on the go is this backpack slash bag that has a diaper changing station inside of it. So if you have a little one who's not quite mobile, who sits still for diaper changes, this could actually help you out a lot with the diaper change. Now let's talk about medicines. You wanna pack any medications that you think you might need. So for example, teething medicine, your child's multivitamin, diaper cream, pain reliever, fever reducer, as well as a first aid kit. We have Band-Aids, Neosporin, small Band-Aids, big Band-Aids, pain relievers, and the Ziploc bag. Now to keep our little ones entertained, we pack a variety of things. So toys that aren't too bulky, think stacking and nesting blocks. Uh, we have this Montessori Busy Book that has pages of just different activities that keep our little one busy. The walls in the stateroom are metal, so Madison loves these little animal magnets. We bring crayons, paper, those wonder markers that don't make a mess, bubbles, and of course we bring the tablet, charger, and earphones. While we still have internet, we download Madison's favorite shows and, and movies. We bring lightweight books. So that's a variety to keep our toddler entertained. Now, if you're planning on swimming in port, and remember, if your child is not potty trained, they're not allowed in Carnival's water areas, we recommend water toys, floaties, swim diaper, and of course, water shoes if your child is mobile. Let's talk about laundry. We know our young children can go through plenty of outfits, so plan on doing laundry at least once during your cruise. The laundry rooms are located on your stateroom floor. We always bring along our collapsible hamper where we store our dirty clothes, and we also bring some laundry pods and dryer sheets since those cost extra on board. Let's talk about beverages. 
Water and whole milk are available on the Lido deck as well as in the main dining rooms. Prior to cruising, we always order water bottles to be delivered to our room. Now we're going to talk about breast milk storage. If you are pumping and need to store your breast milk, it's recommended that you bring along a cooler no bigger than 12 by 12 by 12 and request ice from your stateroom steward as you need it. You can also store your breast milk in the refrigerator at guest services. Oh, and don't forget your breast pump, milk storage bags, and nursing cover if you use one. Baby formula. If your child is on baby formula, make sure you bring enough to last the duration of your cruise because Carnival does not sell formula or baby food. You can bring distilled water for the formula packed in your carry-on luggage or purchase it on board. Don't forget your baby's bottles and a bottle cleaning brush to clean them in your stateroom. We also recommend bringing a pre-cut sponge with dish soap already dried on it, stored inside of a Ziploc bag so that you can wash any sippy cups or bottles inside of your stateroom. Baby food. If your little one eats specific baby food brands, make sure what you bring is sealed in the original packaging. Carnival does not allow homemade food to be brought on board. So if your little one eats solids, we recommend just cutting up little pieces of what you're eating and feed that to them. The main dining room. I think a lot of us parents fear the main dining room because it's a quiet setting and our little ones have to wait patiently for their food. The dining room staff is amazing with young children and they give them so much attention. At dinner each night, we always requested a table off to the side by a window because we did not want to be in the middle of a room with our unpredictable child. Our dining staff always put in an order of fruits, veggies, and mashed potatoes for Madison right when they saw us walk in, which was so nice. There are kids' menus available with the most basic items if you have a picky eater. Personally, we feed Madison whatever we order for ourselves, but cut it up in small pieces. We would bring Madison's tablet to the dining room and would only turn it on for times when she was getting impatient so we could at least enjoy our meal. For meals, two gadgets we will not dine in public places without for our little one are disposable placemats and disposable bibs. We like these disposable placemats because they stick to the table and make for an easy cleanup. When Madison was at the age where she dumped all the food out of her bowl, we would skip the plate and just put her food directly on the placemat and she would feed herself. This option felt much more sanitary and we truly love these things. The disposable bibs we like to use stick to your little one's shirt and it has a pocket to catch all the food that falls. Again, super easy cleanup. Bring your child's favorite snacks. We have puffs, fruit pouches, and they have to be sealed in their original packaging. We bring a couple bowls with lids, spoons, sippy cups or bottles if your child takes a bottle, Ziploc bags to store some extra snacks from the buffet, and Ziploc bags also come in handy when you're in port and your child gets their clothes soaked or messy. Just throw it in here, throw it in your bag, and you're good to go. High chairs and booster seats. Carnival offers these really nice high chairs that come with a tabletop as well as booster seats. We love the high chairs as they keep Madison in one place and her food at easy reach. They are readily available in the main dining room, but you may have to ask a server to find you one on the Lido deck. Family Harbor Suites. We think it's worth mentioning that some Carnival ships have Family Harbor Suites. These rooms are close to the Family Harbor Lounge, which is an exclusive spot for breakfast, snacks, and other activities such as movies and video games. Some toddler families love having access to the lounge. Sail and sign card. Your child will get their own sail and sign card as well as a VIFP. If you wear a lanyard with yours, we recommend tucking your child's sail and sign card inside your lanyard with yours so that you have it at all times. Now, when you're getting off the ship at ports, don't forget their sail and sign card because you will not be able to get off their ship. Do not make the mistake we did trying to get off without the card. We held up a lot of people wasted a lot of time having to run back to the room to get it, and it was just a nightmare. Now we're gonna leave you with our overall advice. If you've cruised before having a child, then you know what a blast cruising truly is, especially if you partake in the deck parties, activities, watch the comedy shows, the musical shows, use the pools and the spas. Well, now that you have a child, throw out any expectations. If you were like us and you travel without help, then you'll quickly see that cruising is completely different with infants and toddlers. It's not relaxing, it's not easy, it's not a big fun party. You will miss out on activities and shows, you will be stuck in your stateroom when your child naps, you won't have quiet romantic dinners with your partner, you will however make family memories to last a lifetime. You will give your child experiences whether they remember them or not, so take lots of pictures and videos. You will have a wonderful family vacation. Our overall advice when cruising with infants and toddlers is to just take it easy and go with their flow. The part that can be relaxing is napping when they nap, 
eating when they're hungry, and let's not forget it is vacation, so no cooking and cleaning. Make sure your little one gets their naps and give them plenty of time to let that toddler energy out, if they're mobile, of course. We hope you learned a ton about cruising with infants and toddlers. If you enjoyed our video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below letting us know how old your child will be when they go on their first carnival cruise. We've also linked these awesome gadgets we've shared with you down below, so make sure you check them out. Thank you for watching and happy cruising!